Mount Rainier is massive, and even though we think of it as beautiful and quiet, down inside it's not all that quiet. Well, most of these are below magnitude one or magnitude one, these little tiny ones here, but these, this purple one is a uh, two something. I met up with Bill Steele at the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network at the UW. They handle the earthquake end of all of this, and you can see them here, 11 more just in the last 48 hours, 23 in the past two weeks. The little ones can tell us a lot. And don't adjust your TV for what I'm about to show you. Life underground, even in a cave, is a pretty dark place. As far as the rest of it goes, you can't go there anyway. So every time there's a little earthquake, it's like a flashbulb going off. Try to remember what you just saw. We think these are happening in cracks uh, where there's basically fluid water, uh, most likely, that's uh, being forced through those cracks. And Wes Thalen is a volcanic a seismologist for the Cascades Volcano Observatory in Vancouver. Over time, these little quakes could give scientists a much more detailed picture of what's down there, which could help when it comes to a, a real eruption, where instead of seeing a tiny quake every hour or more, there would be hundreds, if not thousands. But there are recent quakes all over our state, particularly on the west side, not just under Mount Rainier. And that red dot, a new 2.3 outside of Ellensburg. For a month or so, you have an increase uptick in seismicity, and then things kind of come down again and stuff. These average out over time, and what you end up seeing, though, is that, yeah, we are in a very seismically active area. So, Glenn, we know how big Mount St. Helens was in terms of the explosiveness. Yeah. What about Rainier? How big a threat is Rainier? Remember, 57 people were killed in 1980 in Mount St. Helens, which was in a much more rural area. Rainier is considered one of the world's most deadly volcanoes. Yes, it's absolutely massive, but it's also fairly close to the most populated areas of the state, certainly to Puyallup, Tacoma, all depending on which direction that ash cloud goes. That could also make life very complicated for people around there who may not be in immediate life or death situation, but just trying to get along. 